the system just cannot handle it, then we know that that would be the worst case scenario. Also, to the question about why wouldn't you just go from 200 to 240, why wouldn't you go to 300, why wouldn't you go to 500 if the things weren't breaking? Is because, well, it takes time, which equals money, and especially coordination of the test environments with other, other groups, if you have to have dedicated time and you don't have your own performance test environment, which also costs money. And then the licenses, of course, cost money, especially if you're using Load Runner and you want to get up, you know, they give you a group, you know, here's 100 or whatever the packages are for $13,000, here's another package for $26,000 and so forth. So, you know, you have a certain amount of money that you can give. But you can play around with things like, um, you know, the, the, there's some math behind it as far as maximizing your usage out of those regions, but in the end, doing something like Larry's talking about there will should answer the questions or the concerns that your organization has about the product. Can it really get there or not? Uh, extrapolating is always a good way to fake it in the end, right? Mm -hmm. need to extrapolate is a good way. <laughs> <laughs> fake is not one. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just for us, right? Yeah. Fake is just for us. Yeah, but then when you do projection, your, your graph will have dotted lines. So yes. people know that, okay, yeah. I shouldn't trust that. <laughs> but what you're really sorry, just what you're really looking for to, to see that where that problem is going to be is you're looking for that where the hockey stick starts to show up, not because there's a game going on or anything. But really, you want to see a hockey stick graph start to happen because if it's just going straight, then you don't know. You know, it's like Larry said, when it gets to 240, maybe it's double 120, maybe it's not. Like, is it still going linear if it's a one to one round? Yeah. But you, if you see it starts to curve in an, in an exponential direction, then you know you're reaching the hockey stick, which means shortly after that, things are going to be bad. Right? Now, this is the real low runner graph <laughs> from low runner. So when you, after you execute um, a low profile with all these uh, uh, different script, uh, different loads, you will get this graph automatically. You don't have to do anything. You just come up. Uh, and this graph is from a 200 user test. And uh, now we do have two markers. So one at 5 seconds, one at 10 seconds. Um, when you look at a low runner graph, you will always be happy to see something as messy as here. Because it means that all your transactions are together under certain number of seconds. And you won't be happy when you see those spikes. That means some transactions are way above the average. And um, by marking some regions, you know that, okay, um, you can estimate the 50% um, of the transactions are way below five seconds, and then uh, another 40, 30 percent of transactions are between five to ten seconds, and some of the known intensive transactions are always above that. And for 200 users, it won't meet the acceptance uh, performance acceptance criteria anyway. So that means well, the system will still work, but the users will not be happy because they expect everything to be uh, in the ten seconds. All the pages, all the extras that we do, they should come back with a response within 10 seconds, but when you have 200 users on the system doing different things together, some of these transactions are way above 10 seconds, so that means the users will not be happy. And this is a perf mode graph. So um, now we mark it vertically because the, uh, the markers are for different time um, slots. So uh, looking at your IM logs or your own notes, you will know that only for um, during that period of time you are running a 120 users test, during that time an 80 users test, that time we were doing an 80 but then for some reason server crashed or someone just ignorantly re rebooted the server without letting us know so we have to stop that test. So we have all this uh, information when you keep your own log uh, during test execution. And um, you can add different counters, because perf mode by default, they basically log everything. 
they log everything happening on the server. And if you include all the counters on the graph, you won't see a, you won't see any white space on the graph. It's just <laughs> everywhere. So you just filter them out and just look at the ones that that it's meaningful to you, and then you will come up with a graph like this. So let's say the um, the yellow one is CPU utilization. It kind of makes sense because like 40 users, CPUs are only at around 35, 40 percent. 80 users, 60, and then 120, uh, a bit higher, maybe 80. Any questions about the perform graph? You've seen anyone use perform before? So those different lines up there, they're, they're of their own scale. Like that's a percentage scale going up the side, they're zero to 100. Which? Like, because uh, the yellow or the amber type line is not the same type of units as the purple right, line. Right, they have different scale. Yeah. Say the yellow, the um, process, uh, uh, CPU percentage, uh, percent processor, yeah. That's uh, one to one, so you know that 40 is 40. But uh, when you look at the uh, contact switch per second, it's um, 0 0.1. 0 0.001. So let's look at that line, which is kind of down here somewhere. And you will multiply that by a thousand. Yeah, this um, only applies to the project that. Um, The environment was, uh, the database environment was on the uh, mainframe, and the mainframe environment is shared with all the different applications and things in the organization. So unlike um, a, maybe just one database server or a cluster of database server serving one application, in that organization, the, the DB2 environment residing on mainframe is actually shared among all different applications used by the organization. So you can see the um, CPO, I mean, um, the purple one, the transaction, CPO trans transaction response type, it doesn't really go in direct proportion to um, the number of, the increase in number of uh, users because um, the environment was shared. So um, maybe at one of the 160 user tests, um, it could be during lunchtime maybe, and nobody was using the environment, uh, no other application were accessing the DBT or mainframe, so uh, we got all the resources for, uh, for our test, but then all in a sudden people came back from lunch and uh, the mainframe got busy again. So um, you may think that this is not really a good for doing performance testing. Um, <clears throat> yes, it is not. And um, I, when we did that test, we thought that, okay, mainframe, with um, sharing all the resources with different applications, really not good for testing. We thought that Windows environment or the, even on VMs are the, the better option. And recently, we just found out that some of the modern virtual machines, like big servers, they have big hardware, and you have virtual machines in there. Um, you don't really get your dedicated resources. The configurations may give you um, the option to set uh, the maximum CPUs allowed for the uh, particular server. So that means on a normal day, you only have one CPU, because one is the minimum. Uh, when your server gets busy, and everybody else are not so busy, you may be able to get two CPUs. But if you're busy and everybody else are also busy, even though you are capped with two CPUs, you still don't get two CPUs. So now I would say these days when we have virtualization and cloud computing, <laughs> trying to get a consistent um, environment or infrastructure to do load testing is really difficult or close to impossible. So uh, 